So recently I recreated the Moog Labyrinth inside of Bitwig Studio and today it's about the Subharmonicon. So I want to share this preset with you and this is how it sounds. So I just hit play here. Okay. So I want to show you how this works and how the layout is. So this is the real synthesizer that you can see in the background here on the browser. And the main idea is that you have two main oscillators. Each of these oscillators has sub ratio knobs. So you can dial in a division of the main oscillator frequency. So you divide by two or three or four and so on, which also means these knobs are connected. So when you change the main frequency here, you also change the sub uh, frequencies, of course. So these are connected. And then you have down here a mixing section. So you can bring in the volume of each of these oscillators here on top, a routing panel, um, where you can route basically sequencer one to either the main knob or the two uh, sub oscillators here, or both of them, or just none of them. So you can route this, but sequencer one is always connected to VCO one. It's nothing you can do to change this. Sequencer two is always connected to oscillator two. So that's the main routing. And then on top of that, you have pulley rhythms. So you have not only sub ratios of frequencies, you also have pulley rhythms, which is, which is basically more or less the same concept, just rhythmically. Um, so you have multiple clocks here, rhythm one, two, three, four, and then you can mix and match these uh, clocks together to create pulley rhythms. And you can route them to sequencer one or sequencer two or both of them or none of them or just this one in sequencer one and this one in sequencer two. So you can uh, mix this to create pulley rhythms. And all of this is reflected inside of my preset here. You can see we have sequencer one on top here. Then we have down here sequencer two and sequencer one goes always to VCO one, which is this section here. And then sequencer two goes always to VCO two here. We have the main frequency knob here. We have the sub ratios here and here and also the levels for uh, these oscillators down here. And we have the clocks here we can mix and send to different sequencers to create pulley rhythms. And then at the right side here, we have the output effect. So like a low pass filter, uh, resonance, of course. Um, then we have two envelopes, VCA for the amplitude envelope and VCF here for the frequency envelope. And then a VCF, uh, envelope amount here so we can dial in a different uh, modulation amount for the filter uh, envelope of course and the volume knob so that's basically it so um, we have your play knob so with the play knob we start more or less um, the triggering of the sequencer here and I hit play and then you can see here uh, S1 means basically this is the step, step position of the sequencer one and S2 is the step position of sequencer two down here. So you have a slight idea where you are in the sequence. You can also hit stop and then use the next button here to step through the sequencer. It's exactly like it is on the real deal, right? You have this next button here to step through the sequence. And then on each step, you can dial in a different uh, position here of these two sequencer knobs and then hit uh, trigger, trigger this position. If you don't want to use the trigger knob here, you can also use the keyboard. Um, you don't change the key with the keyboard, you just I just used to trigger the gate input basically to trigger this position here. So here we change uh, step two of sequencer one. Sequencer one goes always to VCO one. So we can change the default position. Right, so this is the main frequency here. 
it's pretty high, but it's also very high on the device itself. I think it's C6, if I'm correctly, if I measure this correctly. Um, but it makes sense because you want to dial in sub ratios and you get pretty low frequencies pretty fast when you just divide this main frequency by a certain number. So let's dial in here the sub oscillator here, start with this. So this is also divided by one. So it's the same frequency as this one and then divided by two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you divide the main frequency by a certain number and then you create uh, chords with this. So this is then the main frequency. Right? And then maybe sub oscillator two. And then with the sequencer here, sequence one, we want to only change the main frequency. And when we change the main frequency, we also change the frequency of sub oscillator one and sub oscillator two, of course. So right. And so you can program in your sequence, you hit next and then you hit the keyboard and you dial in all the, um, yeah, frequencies or sub ratios, you dial in the value for the steps and then you create a nice new step and sequence then, of course, at the end. Maybe um, I let this run here. It's a bit slow because the main time base here, which is just also a clock division, so it's always synchronized to the main BBM of the project. Let's go for 50% here. And then we have rhythm one, go to sequence on one. Okay. Um, so this is how this works. Um, maybe you can also dial in something for step two. Um, a problem I have with the real device also is that you trigger always a step when sequencer two, let's say sequencer two plays a bit faster than sequencer one. But you also uh, always trigger um, the first sequencer all the time when you trigger with a second oscillator, a uh, second sequencer. I don't know why they did this. I guess it's just because you trigger with sequencer two and sequencer one the same envelope for the amplitude, right? So it's not like you have two um, amplitude envelopes for each sequencer. So you always trigger the same amplitude amplitude envelope, right? So it's trigger the same thing basically. Uh, which in my opinion would be better to have two amplitude envelopes, but that's, that's how it is. It's a very simple device actually. Um, let's play here for a moment. You can see here S2 plays a lot l less fast than sequencer one, right? But you still trigger with with sequence one pretty fast. And we need to die. And when you mix here sequence of one, sequence of one, right? Two, ry two rhythms you more or less add up and you get kind of fully rhythmic, interesting patterns going. I think I did this pretty close. I, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong there. I can also update this in the future if I get something wrong. Um, I think this is how it works in in real uh, in the real world. 
Um, yeah, inside, I can show you how it looks like from the inside. It's actually not that, it's not super complicated. Um, a lot of stuff is here going into the sequencer, right? Adding up different trigger modules here. Um, we have here the three oscillators and here are three oscillators. There's also pitch quantize here to C, um, C major. That is also how it is in the real device. I use this here for this knob, quantized 8 ET, right? Um, and if you switch this off, then you have here, let's put this to keyboard mode. There's no quantization. can turn this off if you want to. Um, is there something else I want to explain? Um, no, I think that's actually it. You can reset also here the sequencer if you want to. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's the device. So I put this here on my Patreon so you can download this. I am not sure if I make this for free. I have to look it up. I think I also made the Labyrinth for free, so I'll probably make this also for free. Um, but you can also support me on Patreon if you want to, um, uh, if you feel the urge for that. <laughs> because sometimes there goes a lot of time into finding out how the real devices work and then implement this into Bitwig. So, you know, it's a bit of work here and there. <laughs> so yeah, that's it, uh, I think, for this video. I hope you like it. I leave me a comment and a like, a subscription and so on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.